later on. Now. How do you rate this current Wigan team? Great. Absolutely fantastic. Better than we've ever had. What do you think of this Wigan team? The best. The brilliant. The brilliant. They They're the best team you can get. They just got so many outstanding backs. Yeah. Just spin down the field and yeah. score. Mm. The best. They're good. No one can beat them. And what do you girls think of this current Wigan team? Great. Oh, great. Super. Super. Better, better than the teams of the past? Well, I think the coach is great, Graham Law. He's made this team. He's brought the best out of them. He's super. And what do you think of Wigan? Oh, they're fantastic. You enjoy coming to Central Park yeah, all the time? I love it. love it. It's great. Okay. What do you think of this Wigan team? Fantastic. What, no, what's your greatest it. thrill watching them? Pardon? What's the greatest thrill watching them? Watching them win. And they are going to win. Easy. What about the outcome tonight? I think we'll win easy. Easy. I think it's one of the best uh, teams we've ever had at Central Park. Although in the past years we've had some good teams, but I think at the present time I, I rate it. Well, I think they've proved themselves over the last couple of seasons. It's about one of the best in the world. Brilliant. Out of this world. Best team I've ever seen at Wigan. And they're going to win. Definitely. It's the best team in the world and I hope they win tonight. That's right. How good are Wigan? Brilliant. Are they going to win tonight? Yeah. Do I detect a manly flag here? No chance. No chance. What do you think of this Wigan team? Fantastic. Great. Who's your star player? Um, well, we've a low down, we've a full team of them. <laughs> How would you describe this Wigan team? Great. Great. Any other words to describe them? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the winners tonight. Uh, winners tonight. The winners tonight. <laughs> yeah. So welcome back to Central Park and the news is the Manly Moringa side are about to come out onto this famous Central Park at Wigan. Back in 1959 a crowd of 47,000 people set the record against St Helens. Just wait for the great reaction to the Sydney champions as they make their way down to the tunnel and onto this lush turf here at Wigan. Led out by Paul Vorton, wait for the noise. Well, not unlike the Sydney cricket ground on grand final day. But I can assure you this team will treat Central Park to some magic football tonight. The fireworks go off, the ground is very lush, quite soft underfoot, and the Manly team very, very confident indeed. Here's Ellery Hanley about to lead Wigan out and in contrast wait for the reaction of the home fans as the Riversiders make their way onto their home pitch, Central Park. The fireworks continuing. There'll be plenty of fireworks in this match, let me assure you. Very slow entry by Ellery Hanley and the Wigan team, but the noise will greet them on the pitch. Here he comes, leading the Wigan team out. And listen to the crowd. At the northern end of the ground, the Manly team bunched in anticipation of the kickoff. Ellery Hanley very slowly leads the Wigan team out. Finally, two or three of them break away. And now the sprints across the ground as they throw the ball around in warm-up. Fantastic atmosphere. The crowd here at Central Park absolutely love their football. They've been waiting for this one. I know the interest is high back in Sydney and right around Australia. But let me assure you, the fans at Wigan have been waiting for this one since it was announced a few months ago this game was going to happen. Well, the referee for this very important match is the man, in fact, that uh, controlled the game between Australia and Wigan just 12 months ago in the opening match of the Kangaroo Tour. John Holdsworth, the 28-year-old postman from Leeds. He refereed the 87 Cup Final at Wembley and also the John Player Trophy Final last year. So, Paul Vorton, the manly captain, waiting for Ellery Hanley to join him for the toss of the coin. Well, Graham Eady, fabulous atmosphere. 
It is, David. They've, uh, they've really outdone everything this time, Wigan. The, uh, the fireworks, the, you know, the whole lot, the crowd are fantastic. It's, uh, it's just set the scene for a, you know, a great game of rugby league. We're all talking about uh, the fireworks, the bomb thrower. Maxi Krilic has joined us on the touchline. Max, this really is tremendous stuff. It certainly is, uh, David. It's going to be an exciting night here tonight. Well, the crowd and in eager anticipation. Ellery Hanley, just watch him go tonight. He didn't show the greatest form on the 84 tour down under. Andy Goodway, of course, playing against his old club, Manly Baringa. He's got a point to prove tonight because he feels he was shabbily treated by the Manly side and he stayed down under. There's another key player, Sean Edwards, the youngest man ever to appear in a Wembley Cup final and the youngest man ever to also wear the colours of Great Britain, the 18 years of age. And the fullback Steve Hampson, one of the great hands, very much like Gary Jack in his play, he will ignite this crowd here tonight. I'd say the crowd is around about 37,000. They're expecting capacity tonight. I think they've got it. It was threatening earlier today that we we're going to have heavy rain. That didn't come, so we've been blessed. The man about to get the game underway, he's a familiar face in Sydney, Joe Lydon. And look at the crowd. They'll go up with this kickoff. Ellery Hanley, just to point out something, he's played 233 games in the top grade in Britain. He signed from uh, Bradford for £150,000 in 85 to come to Wigan. 233 games, he scored 215 tries. Joe Lydon, Andy Gregory with a short kickoff, and they nearly caught Manly napping on that short side. And look at that defence, so they're up in numbers. But a penalty. And the crowd don't like that. The man that was swamped was the centre three-quarter, Darrell Williams. And up comes Dale Shearer to look for touch on the popular side of Central Park. He'll take the kick from about 14, 15 metres inside his own end of the ground. And he'll be driving it up towards the halfway line. In fact, he takes it about eight metres beyond the halfway line. Mal Cochran will be the man to get it underway. And Gately hits it first up. He's broken the line and takes play inside the 22. So Manly on the attack in the opening moments. Cochran now, Phil Daly, didn't play here in the opening match of the Kangaroo Tour, but he gets a warm welcome to Central Park. Swarming defence by the Riversiders. Now Des Hasler, out to Cliffy Lyons. Held the ball up beautifully for O'Connor. Well, on the first game here last year, he touched the ball for the first time and scored a try. No such luck in 87. Another penalty. Players well offside, and John Holsworth, obviously, it's going to clamp down on that Graham Eady, but a little bit of a flare-up with Ronnie Gibbs as well. Well, they've, they've got... That's the only way Wigan can uh, really beat Manly, I think, tonight, David, is to move up very quick and bustle them, and that's what they're doing in this early minute, putting a little bit of uh, niggle in, and uh, you know, Manly just have to uh, take it in their stride and, um, and keep playing football. Well, Max, you're wearing the Manly blazer down there, just inside the touchline in, favor, in front of all these uh, Wigan supporters. What sort of reaction have you got down there in the opening minutes? Well, it's certainly quite exciting already, David. The, uh, the pressure's certainly on, and it's certainly it's on the referee as well, and he's come up with two penalties already to Manly. Well, can Michael O'Connor convert it into points? In 1987 in Sydney, he scored 101 points for the Sea Eagles, 10 tries and 31 goals. The leading point scorer on the Kangaroo Tour. Can he give Manly the early start here against Wigan. Referee John Holsworth signals time off with the ball coming off the mound. Gee, this really will be a confidence boost to Manly Warringah if they can draw first blood. Michael O'Connor with the ball placed 15 metres out, about 5 metres to the left of the uprights. The crowd trying to put him off. He's a seasoned campaigner though. And he answers the pressure with the first two points and Manly hit the lead in the opening minutes of this match. They lead by two points to nil. Well, Graham, you know the importance of uh, an early break in a, in a big game like this, and that's, that'll really settle the boys down after the jet lag and the big trip over from uh, Australia. It will, David. They've started off very well, especially uh, young Ian Gately. If he keeps running like that, we're going to have a, a heavy night. Dale Shearer fields the ball about three metres out from his own line, runs it across field. Finally taken by Edwards in the tackle. Over the top came Ellery Hanley. So he's taken about 12 metres out from his own goal line. Mel Cochran, they'll be keen to get it away from this danger area. Fatty Vorton spotted the gap. Poor defence by Wigan. Support tried to find Lyons on the inside, but that was a good tackle by Hampson. 
Cochrane now from dummy half. They move at the open side again through Hasler and Lyons. Held it up for uh, Gately. He's got great ball skills. A bad pass, though. Nicky Kiss comes up with it for Wigan. So Brian Case, one of the veterans in the side for Edwards. Out to Andy Gregory. Spinning it out wide. Hampson hits the line, but beautifully picked off that time by Fatty Wharton. Joe Lydon. Potter. Driven to the ground by some strong manly defence. Headed by Gibbs in the penalty. The first for Wigan. Goes against Ronnie Gibbs. For Max, I can tell you he'll be out for a big one tonight. His final appearance in Manly Colours before heading up north next year. How's his preparation been? It's, I know it's his first trip overseas. It's certainly been very good, mate. He's fired up tonight. and He's going to get stuck right into it. He's fired right up for a big game. So, two points to nil. Manly in the lead. Well, they've got a series of uh, very talented goal kickers in the side. Uh, we look through. Joe Lydon uh, is about the third string kicker. We've got Ellery Hanley uh, also that kicks goals. And Stevenson as well. He'll assume the goal kicking responsibilities first up and a very talented man, Graham Eady. He is. He's been kicking very well too um, at the start of this season. And um, to keep keep places, uh, team, oh, players like Ellery Hanley and... Um, Joe Lydon not kicking, he must be going well. Well, Stevens has averaged six goals a match so far, 36 goals in season 1987, a season just six matches old in the Premiership, and a chance now to level the scores. David Stevenson, the ball placed about 11 metres in Manley's end of the ground, centre field. I think the crowd will tell the story of this success. He's hit it very well. This ball game is all tied up with five minutes gone in the first half. Manly two, Wigan two. Well, Max, we mentioned to Graham the importance of the early start, but it's also important to come back as Wigan have done. There's the kickoff taken by Gregory. Back for Leiden. There's that big punt downfield. It'll fall wide of uh, Dale Shearer. All the Wigan players offside. It's picked up by goal. It's a bad mistake by Cliff Lyons. I thought he had knocked it forward. Well, Graham, you're a little bit more conversant with these referee signals here in England. Can you work that one out? Well, he said that uh, Cliff Lyons had knocked on then. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, he's got the whistle. Well, scrum feed to Wigan and a penalty. A little bit of back chat from the Manly players. I know, Max, when you captain the Kangaroos in 82, interpretation of referee's decision has always been a contentious point, and that's something that Paul Vaughton will have to come to grips with leading this Manly team. Oh, mate, you've just got to learn to put up with it. It's a situation where the referee is always right in whatever sphere of football or any sport you're playing, and uh, it's something you've just got to come to grips with and just don't give away the penalties. Well, there's the kick-taking play about five metres short of the 22. The tap restart from Nicky Kiss. He takes it up to the 22 before he's taken by Phil Daly and also by Paul Vorton. Charging upfield. Cochran over the top. Nicky Kiss. Open side. Turning it back. Gregory. Long pass. Stevenson. Hampson in the line. Beautiful play. Oh, but he's lost the ball. He's one of the great attacking players in English football, is Steve Hampson. But here's the counter-attack from Manly Baringa. The referee's whistle's gone again. Again, the temper's fair. I think a few people asked the question, how seriously these two sides would be taking this game. I think it's already been answered. Yes, I think uh, the attitudes of both sides are uh, out there to, to win and uh, win well. So Ellery Henley comes down to settle his players down. Pedley going to Manly Baringa, Dale Shearer to look for touch on the far side. Scoreline, two points apiece. The battle tonight to determine the best rugby league club in the world. There's Phil Daly. Oh, lifted up and driven to the ground. Watch for Gately. Well, they realise that uh, he stood them up so easily in that opening minute. Hasler, now Ronnie Gibbs. First touch and attack. Oh, taken high was Cliff Lyons. Popped the pass up beautifully. Cochran. And he takes play to the 22. Manley on the attack. Hasler cuts out Lyons and gave it to Vorton. 
through the dummy to Cunningham and Vorton takes the tackle. Cochrane from dummy half. They'll have to watch him there. One of the real great attacking players from that role. Vorton now for Hasler to Cliff Lyons. The little kick put up. Pressure on the fullback Hampson. Oh, and he took it beautifully. Took it beautifully under pressure. And Ronnie Gibbs came in for his chop as well. Well, here's this great counter-attack by Wigan. Henderson Gill, one of the crowd pleasers at Central Park. You watch this take, Graham Eady, of, uh, of Hampson. That was something that really is a sign of a great champion. It was. He took that very well. Now the pressure was there and uh, he never shirked it at all. So Wigan. Again, some solid defence by Manly Baringa. Owen Cunningham was the man. Lydon. That's a clever kick. Well, he knows every blade of grass at Central Park. Came across some winners last year for £100,000. He's already paid, repaid a lot of that. Scored some fabulous tries for Eastern Suburbs in Sydney this year. And scored a gem of a try against Australia in the Test Series on the Kangaroo Tour. So John Hallsworth has had plenty to do. The referee in the opening nine or ten minutes of this match where we see the scores all tied up and a penalty again goes against, Manly, against uh, Wigan. Brian Case was the man uh, spoken to. Mel Cochran also querying the referee's decision as well. The interpretation of something as Max Krillich mentioned they'll have to uh, come to grips with. The Shearer looks for touch on the members grandstand side of the ground. So Michael O'Connor with the tap restart. Cliff Lyons, Hassler, Cunningham. Superb debut earlier this year for the young 21-year-old player against Canterbury. This is a player that's going to be a player of the future for Manly Baringa, Ian Gately. Mark my words. Hasler out to Cliff Lyons. Good movement of the ball by Manly. Dummy by Vorton. O'Connor overran him, but Vorton, the captain, takes it inside the 22. Tackle that time by Potter and also by Edwards. Manly looking sharp in attack. Gibbs has lost it. And it's picked up by Brian Case on his own 22-yard line. 11 minutes gone in this first half. Wigan player down injured. Oh, that's a beautiful pass from Wayne. Out to Russell on the right wing. But the cover defence of Manly Moringa is there through William. Uh, by through uh, Daly. Gregory to Edwards. Good play that time by Andy Goodway. Took the tackle centre field. Edwards. He's got a great ton of pace. There's the kick over the top. That's turned the Manly defence around. Dale Shearer fields it inside the quarter line. Supporter Stuart Davis on the outside. He elects to run on his own. Got around Wayne, but can't get around Potter. There's Hasler. I can tell you how important rugby league is in his life. Uh, got married on Friday, Graham, and here he is playing in a, in a match just a few days later. Yes, he, uh, well, he brought his wife over with him, Dave, I suppose he couldn't get rid of her. <laughs> Paul Vorton again for the third time splits them up the middle. Paul Vorton playing in his first match in England despite having played six test matches in his career after he made his debut in 82. There's a loose ball, first touch for Stuart Davis. He's been around Brookvale Able for a long, long time but really only has emerged in the last couple of years. There's the kick from Shearer. Oh, beautifully taken by Goodway. The crowd really warm to that. Cliff Lyons runs him down centre field. Hampson. Over the top came Gately. Well, Cliffy Lyons. Agitated penalty goes against Manly Baringa. Well, Max, uh, no doubting about the pace of this match. They call Wigan the entertainers. We know what Manly can do in Sydney. How have you seen it from down at that angle? Well, certainly it's very exciting, David. Both sides are willing to throw the ball around. The backs have been used a lot, and it's, uh, the crowd's getting very excited about a great game at the moment. Nicky Kiss takes the play to Cochrane and Daly. Wrapped up in the two-man tackle. Andy Gregory's the man that goes to dummy half. Cut out Wayne and gave it to Case. Bumped off Ronnie Gibbs. You don't see that often too often. 
And the desperate second line of defence of Manly is tested to the limit. Potter. Oh, great tackle. Well, Ronnie Gibbs said, I may have missed one. I'm not going to miss the second. Andy Gregory out to Edwards. Hilary Hanley has been conspicuous with his absence from the ball so far in the opening minutes. Kept alive again. Good hands by Goodway. Deemed not to be held. Hampson in the line. Back for Joe Lydon. Ten metres short of the line with Wigan on the attack. Henderson Gill. He's likely to go from dummy half himself. But he's cut short. Once again with a big hit from Ron Gibbs. Edwards. Dead in goal. Play will come back to the quarter line. So the tap restart with Daly. Spinning out of one tackle. Hasler. Gately, the pass was forward. The crowd spotted it. Referee John Hallsworth didn't. That's Hasler, darting from dummy half. Oh, the gap opened up. But again, some good play by Goodway, wrapping him up in the tackle on the halfway line. Shearer. Nicky Kiss affecting the tackle with Edwards. Mal Cochran. Oh, off the mark with Shearer. The referee says play on. Well, I'm amazed at the hands of Andy Goodway. That's the third one he's plucked out of the air. I don't know what he's doing there, mate. He's, uh, he seems to be playing in the second line. Well, did I detect a knee from Phil Daly? I think the crowd on this member's side spotted it. And I can tell you, every tackle counts down there, Max. He does. Ronnie right? Gibson, Noel and Cunningham are really getting stuck into these uh, Wigan boys, and they'll feel all the punishment here tonight. There's Hanley, beautifully tackled by Cunningham. There's Lydon, turning them around again with the kick. Fielded by Stuart Davis. Runs to Stevenson, beat him. But Russell comes in to help affect the tackle. O'Connor. Weaving run taken by Case in the tackle and Nicky Kiss. Cochran. Gibbs. Gately was tackled on suspicion by Nicky Kiss. To all the scoreline, 16 minutes of play gone in this first half. Hasler, Lyons, spun out of one tackle. Hasler, Phil Daly. Well, he made a great recovery, Phil Daly, from a standing start. He was swamped in defence by Potter. Hasler, little kick and chase, taken out of the play, and the referee has picked it immediately. A shoulder charge on the little manly halfback. We'll see it come up again. And the referee, in fact, quite correct in his decision. Yeah, that was definite, Dave, wasn't it? There was two players there, and uh, they never even tried to get out of his way then. Well, it's given a chance for Michael O'Connor to add another two points for Manly Baringa to put them to... A four points to two lead in this first half. A half that's 17 minutes has elapsed. And the crowd, haven't they enjoyed it? They have turned out in their numbers tonight. Michael O'Connor with the ball placed. The kick is about 25 metres out. It's directly in front of the post. His first attempt, he struck it in typical O'Connor fashion. It's a shocker, and he's missed it. Well, uh, how uncharacteristic is that for Michael O'Connor? So, two all the scoreline. That's Stevenson. Gregory. Case. Takes place short of the 22. Again, Holdsworth looking this time at the Manly defence, getting them back the required five metres as Lydon drives the play down over halfway. One of the rare touches for David Ronson so far. Oh, great play by Ronson. 
tremendous counter-attack by Manly Baringa and brings play back inside Wiggins' end of the ground. That's Cochran and Hasler, captain Paul Vorton. He's had a strong first half, put Cunningham through the gap and he's run down by Hanley. And he's stolen the ball. Well, that's one of his great strengths. He's, he really is a strong player. It is, David, and uh, the referees let you get away with a bit of that over here. I think Manly will have to watch that tonight. Andy Gregory, the man that goes to dummy half. Wiggins' chance now to attack. Pace. Nicky Kiss, taken high by Daly and driven to the ground on the halfway line. Penalty. I think the ruling dropping the knees in the tackle. The offenders for the two prop forwards, Phil Daly and Ian Gately. And the man down injured is uh, the hooker, Nicky Kiss. Max, I noticed when uh, O'Connor was attempting that uh, conversion, to the penalty attempt. Well, that's a bad mistake for both teams. Terry Randall was the man that came out as the manly runner. It's great to see him looking so fit and still involved with this manly club. Yeah. So the scrum packs down. Stevenson has received a bit of attention on the touchline. The scrum is camped inside. Manley's 22. Scrum feed by Gregory. Wrestled by Des Hasler to the ground. Joe Lydon runs from dummy half, stepping run by the centre three-quarter. Was originally chosen in the, wing, in the wing position. Dean Bell was the man that pulled out. Here's a penalty. And I think Cliff Lyons has been the man called out. Was it knees again, Graham Eady? It's been given to I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so, David. I think he just went in with a heavy, with a heavy tackle. And um, if there was anything, it might have been just a swinging arm. Well, Cliffy Lyons has been given 10 minutes in the sin bin. Similar reaction when Gary Jack was sent from the field here for 10 minutes in the match on the opening tour match last year. They gave Jimmy Jack a nice send-off. But so Manly playing with a man short. Let's have a look at it again. Or oh, a little bit of a shot, nothing in that at all. Absolutely nothing in it. No, there's been uh, worse incidents, I think, earlier on. But it's given Wigan a chance to hit the lead for the first time in this first half. The scores are locked at two all at the moment. We're at the halfway mark of this first 40 minutes. David Stevenson. About 18 metres out. Just to the right-hand side of the right-hand upright. Struck it beautifully. Oh, he's missed it. Well, from here I thought he'd put it inside that right-hand upright. So O'Connor and Stevenson both failing with their second attempts to all the scoreline. So, the dropout. Deep downfield to the safe hands of Steve Hampson. They're freely tipping him, Graham, to be the, the man that will wear the number one jersey for Great Britain down under next year. Well, he's been playing very well this year, and all last year he was, uh, he was the number one fullback over here. Henderson Gill coming in from that left wing looking for work. The Wigan back line, as I was saying earlier, has been reshuffled with the loss of Dean Bell. Here's Hanley. Gregory cut out Lydon and gave it to Stevenson. Again, some good defence by Cunningham. The ball's gone loose. It's picked up by Nicky Kiss. Now Sean Edwards. Beautiful tackle from Ron Gibbs. Hanley, Daly and Gibbs affecting the tackle. He's the danger man in this Wigan side. He's been closely checked so far in the first half. There's the kick from Edwards. Picked up, Ellery Hanley. And Manley's defence stretched to the limit. There's a fight in back play. The referee says play will go on, but finally he blows the whistle. It's broken out in about three or four places and I suppose Wigan are really irate at that they're in a great scoring opportunity when the whistle went they were Dave Ellery Hanley was uh, was going very well then but uh, you know, I, I, was, I was watching the ball I missed the incident well I was watching Ellery Hanley myself but the referee has called uh, a few players out here it erupted in about three or four different parts of the ground now someone from Manly is being called out let's have a look at it again 
I think it's from the from the little chip. Well, watch it here. This is where it came up. Yes, it happened back in back play from there. We were following that action. But once again, it's given David Stevenson a chance to put Wigan in the lead. They trail by two to nil after just a minute. Wigan replied, square it up after five. 18 more minutes have gone without any further addition to this scoreline. But this big crowd at Central Park have been on the edge of their seats. Well, it appears that young Cunningham is coming off for attention. Max, uh, what seems to be the problem down there? Yes, I think he's got a bit of a knock around the head here, David. He doesn't look too well. He's got, uh, looks like a few uh, stitches will be needed in the night cut there, mate. OK. Well, we're waiting now for Stevenson. On the 22-yard line, or just beyond it, has the ball placed. This time the flags go up and Wigan hit the lead. For the first time, they lead by four points to two. So play back to the halfway line, remembering that Manly Baringa are playing a man short with cliff lines off the field. Owen Cunningham also receiving some attention. And Michael O'Connor to restart play. 16 minutes of play remaining in the first 40 minutes. No tries so far, but plenty of action. Here's the restart. Fielded by Joe Lydon, immediately drives it deep downfield again to Ronson's wing. He finally fielded the ball just outside his own quarter line. And there's Hanley in again trying to reef that ball free. Shearer, 10 metres short of halfway. The Wigan were opened up a couple of times early, Graham, but I really have been reasonably impressed with their defence. It's one of the criticisms of Great Britain football, but it's something that Graham Lowe has really worked on this side. Last year, the best attacking record and the best defensive record in the league. They did. They uh, Well, since Graham Lowe got here, he has he's professionalised the, the side very much, and uh, his uh, main thing is defence. There's the kick up towards the 22. Ronson with the restart. Mal Cochran with the tap. Set move by Manley. Vorton takes it on his own. Paul Shaw is out there at the moment for uh, the Manley side. It's a great moment for him. There's Cochran. Scurries from dummy half. Popped it up beautifully for Dale Shearer. And he's been ruled to have held it up over the line. Well, Mel Cochran split them open wide. Shearer was the man that backed it up. But the referee seemed to be well positioned, Graham. He was. He was very well positioned. And uh, it was a very good run from Mel Cochran. He saw the gap and uh, went straight through. Good backing up by Dale Shearer. Unfortunately, he just couldn't get the ball down. Well, with the reshuffle, there's Hasler goes into lock forward. Shaw there in 17. Will work the scrum for Manly Baringa. Another scrum to pack down. It's only about eight metres out from the Wigan line, virtually under their posts. Scrum feed for Andy Gregory. The Wigan backs up flat. Hanley from the back of the scrum. Well, the referee's detected a little knock on. Another scrum to go down. This time, of course, the feed to Manly Baringa, and that could prove costly. Very untidy scrummaging from both sides. There's one against the feed. Edwards taken in the tackle. Larry Hanley, oh, that's a great tackle from Michael O'Connor. Stevenson. 
running square on the 22 yard line, takes the play to the centre of the ground. Edwards, good way, flick the pass out the back door for Edwards. Great pace by Edwards. Joe Lyon, but Shaw with a superb tackle. Now man, and Wigan look dangerous on attack. Ellery Hanley, Hampson in the line, Stevenson turned it back beautifully for Hampson. Oh, and Paul Vorton thumps him to the ground. Final tackle. Gregory angling the kick. But it goes dead in goal. Play to come back to the quarter line. But it goes to show Maxi Krilic you cannot afford to let this uh, Wigan side run with space. Well, David, they're certainly a very exciting football team. They, they won't play it up the middle. They want to throw the ball around, and they're playing exciting football down here. 11 minutes to half time, four points to two, Wigan in the lead. So the tap restart from Cochrane, Gately. I don't think they'll allow him the freedom they allowed him in the opening minute of this match when he tore them apart up the middle. Gibbs. 10 metres out from their own quarter. Manly in possession of the ball. No tries so far in this match. Shaw. Gately. Williams. Tried to bump through Leiden. Coming across in cover was Potter in 12. Now Shaw. Gately. Well, time must be nearly up for uh, Cliff Lyons from that stint in the, sp in the head in the uh, sin bin. He's on the touchline about to re-enter the fray. Paul Vorton wrestled to the tackle by Sean Wayne. There's Shearer turning Wigan around again. Oh, nicely fielded by Hampson for Russell. Tried to go around Hasler. He did. But he can't beat Mel Cochran. Edwards with the switch of play. Hampson took the tackle. Stevenson seems to always want to run square. Graham, he very rarely takes the ball to the advantage line. No, he, he does that in club games too. He's, uh, he uses his, his halfbacks very well. Gregory, well a lot of the pattern of play revolves around these two playmakers and Edwards and Gregory. It's a nice little trio, isn't it? Uh, Edwards and Gregory and also that man in number 13, Ellery Hanley, at yeah. the back of the scrum. So well, a lot of their play does hang around, uh, or work around those three. So the scrum feed, only about five metres inside. Wiggins into the ground, but the scrum won't, in fact, take effect because the penalty goes to Manly Baringa. And again, the temper's still rather tested and strained out there. Nicky kisses the man and gets the chat from referee John Holsworth. So Dale Shearer looks for touch. And that's a good kick taking play inside the 22. Watch for Gately from the tap restart. There's Ronson. Hasler. player was taken a, what do they call it, the obstruction as they call it over here, it looked all right to me. We'll see it on replay. It's something they really crack down on over here, Graham. They do, even if there's a, a slight... Uh, yeah, a Ronnie Gibbs was there. Yeah. Good decision by the referee, John Holsworth. So play on the halfway line. Another penalty, Leiden to kick for touch. Now a chance for Wigan. With eight minutes of play remaining in this first half. To launch an attack. Nicky kissed to his feet. Goodway held it up for Hanley. The switch of play with Leiden. Hitting the line as Hampson. That should be a penalty. It would be back home. Edwards.
Brian Case. Good ball skills for Nicky Kiss. So Wigan inside the 22 and on attack. Ian Potter, the man that assumes the dummy half roll. Gregory Edwards, Gregory. Good way. He's had a strong first half, both in attack and defence. Hanley. Andy Gregory. Switch of play for Stevenson. And the kick will find touch. So that's keeping the pressure on. Well, Max, do you think uh, the Manly Warringah side would be a little bit worried at the moment uh, with the scoreline so close to half-time? I would say so. Well, I think Andy Goodway and Brian Case are going very well for the Wigan side. They're really taking up to the players and they're, they're both having excellent games, David. Well, I couldn't agree more. Andy Goodway, as I mentioned earlier, probably has a little point to prove against uh, this Manly Warringah side. Oh, there's one against the feed. Gregory just short of the line. Fatty Vorton came out very quickly. Russell, this is where we really can see the, the strength of Ellery Hanley. They'll try and play to him here. Edwards, Stevenson, stepping run. Edwards, off the foot as the referee signals. He's also got Manley back the five. Potter and Case. Kept the ball alive beautifully for Potter. Back now for Wayne, he's lost it. And it's dived on by Ronnie Gibbs. Well, I'm sure the Manly side would have breathed a sigh of relief there when Gibbs fielded that ball for Manly Baringa. Well, he, uh, he was mixed up in about three incidents there, Ron Gibbs, and uh, I think they can be a bit thankful that he was on the field then. Well, half-time has been signalled. It showed another five minutes still remaining on the clock here at Central Park. But the scoreline at half-time... Well, there's a bit of confusion. The players are still remaining. The touch judge says we've still got time to go. He's going, to, he's going to call the timekeeper out, I think. Here. Give him a caution, Graham. Well, it's a strange, strange thing to happen in a game of rugby league, isn't it? The five minutes short. Well, the crowd are chanting. I think they want five more minutes of action. They've played four quid apiece to come in here tonight. And they want to get every minute of the 80. Well, I've never seen Max ever this happen before. Sorry, David, I just couldn't catch it, and the noise I, uh, down here is deafening. I don't think I've ever seen this ever happen before. <laughs> no, no, it's, uh, it's one of those circumstances. Someone's pushed the wrong button, I think, and uh, he's going to get his uh, knuckles wrapped to ever push that button. Well, he's asked both touch judges. He went over to the local constabulary and asked if he was keeping time. I can assure you there's about five minutes remaining. Now, both captains have come up. Well, Terry Randall's coming out there at the moment. We're going to get a, a scrum to restart it. Terry is one of the trainers on this tour. Still looking fit enough to play, Graham. He is. He's looking very fit. I was talking to him this afternoon, David. So, the scrum feed on the 22. All sorts of confusion here at Central Park. And a scrum win to Manly Baringa. Dale Shearer. Paul Shaw runs from dummy half. Ton of pace, this youngster. Centre of the ground, midway between the half and the 22, a Manly in possession. Gately, bumping run, taken well in the tackle by Sean Wayne. Hasler again darting from dummy half, that's where Manly think they can see the gaps. Good strong play by the prop four daily to take play beyond the halfway line. Cochran, Shaw, Cliff Lyons back on the field. Head down, taken over the top by Case. Quick play the ball, and we're going to come up with it, or have they? Ronnie Gibbs says it's a manly ball. Holsworth comes in for a closer look. Manly come up with it. Dale Shearer. Solid defence by Hanley. Hasler. Shaw. You wouldn't have seen much of this youngster, uh, Graham, but I can assure you he's really made an impact in Sydney this year. Martin Meredith's been uh, singing his praises ever since he's been over. Here's a great break by Williams. Pass back in field for Gibbs. It's been left behind. And the referee will rule the knock on. Four points to two. This battle today at Central Park to decide the best club side in the world, the Sydney Premiers, against the team from England, Wigan, who last year 
an impressive record. The Lancashire Cup, the John Player Trophy, the League Championship and the Premiership Trophy. The only one that eluded them, Graham, was the one that uh, you savoured, that uh, Wembley Cup triumph back on May 2. Well, I was glad to have that instead of them. <laughs> Scrum win to Manly. Michael O'Connor, he's had a quiet first half. Shearer, back for O'Connor. Now for Lyons. Good support by Manly Moringa. The ball's kept alive, but taken by Lydon. Here's the Wigan counter-attack. Stevenson. Well, Stevenson reacted to the tackle by Williams. So did the crowd. And I think finally, with 38 minutes of play gone in the first half, the Hooters sounded again. So the players, for the second time, attempt to leave the field for the half-time break. It gives us a chance to take a break with the scoreline. Wigan 4, Manly, Waringa 2. We'll be back with the action of the second half in just a moment. Welcome back to Central Park at Wigan for this World Club Championship encounter between Manly Warringah, the Sydney Premiers and this great side from England, the Wigan Riversiders, four points to two. The locals lead this encounter, no tries in the first half. And Graham Eddy, I suppose that really is a surprising aspect of the first 40 minutes. We've got two of the best attacking sides in the world and yet the defence really hasn't been broken. It hasn't, Dave, no. Uh, there's been a lot of ball spun wide and uh, the defence has held tight. Well, there's the kick-off for the second 40 minutes. What lies ahead of us? If it's anything like the action of the first half, you're in for a treat. Henderson Gill takes the first tackle of the second half. No changes to either side, although we see Ellery Henley out there playing without a number. Ronnie Gibbs, good solid defence again. Wigan camped inside their own 22. Sean Wayne charging upfield, met by Cunningham. Also by Phil Daly, uh, Mal Cochran it was, in 12. Nicky Kisser, dummy half, takes on his opposing hooker Cochran. Gately comes in as well. Watch for Joe Lydon, we'll see the clearing kick from inside the quarter line. Well, good, that's good pressure by Gibbs, but Lydon evades the tackle. But it did put his kick under pressure. Oh, Lydon fielded it beautifully. Good way, Sean Edwards. Superb play by Wigan. Edwards, oh, what a great counter-attack by Wigan. And Joe Lydon was the man that sparked it. And a penalty. Superb play by Joe Lydon. He is capable of anything on the day. And once again, he showed his great class. It was very, very fast then, David, wasn't he? Uh, he was put under pressure by Ronnie Gibbs very well. Got the, the kick, which uh, turned out not to be a very good kick at all. But then uh, he made it into a great... A great uh, kick by chasing through. Well, Maxi Krillich, you can never let a player like that uh, alone, and, and he's just showed the great ability to counteract uh, what he thought may have been a bad kick. Well, we're having a bit of trouble with Max trying to, on the sideline at the moment, but another chance for a kick from Stevens. Here it comes again in replay. Edwards was the man that really took the attack to Wigan, but finally their cover defence of Manly was there. And wrapped him up in the tackle, but a chance for Stevenson. So far, he's kicked two goals from three attempts. Has the ball placed, 18 metres out, 15 metres to the right of the uprights. What a vital kick this one is for Wigan. Well, the flags go up. Wigan go to a four-point lead. They lead by six points to two early in the second half. Well, a penalty. Des Hasler was trying to get the quick restart. He takes the tap. Cliff Lyons and Manly counter-attack. Stuart Davis tried to stand Stevenson up on that far side. Cunningham. Good defence by Joe Lydon. Cochran, Hasler, cut out Gibbs and Gorton offside. 
Well, they really can't afford these errors. No, the errors are starting to come back, uh, come into the game, and uh, that was a bit uncharacteristic of Fatty. You know, he, uh, he didn't have a lot of pressure on him then. So the scrum feed with the Wigan put in by Gregory. Manley screw the scrum. Hanley comes off the back. Hasler and Gibbs for the man that wrapped him up. There's Potter. Wrestled to the ground and halfway by Phil Daly. But Wigan have come out with all guns blazing in the second half. Beautiful step from Edwards. It'll take a lot of uh, skill by the Manly side to really settle their composure. They've had their backs to the wall in the opening three or four minutes of the second half. Andy Gregory, Edwards, through the dummy. Gee, he's got some pace. But he ran into a brick wall of Ronnie Gibbs and also Paul Horton. Leiden, attempt to drop goal, taken out by Gibbs. The touch judge in. Well, I would like to see it again in replay, Graham Eady, because Gibbs, I felt, was committed. He didn't miss him, I can assure you of that. Were you watching back play? I, I didn't really see it. I saw Ronnie Gibbs going through, but then I uh, was watching the flight of the ball. Well, Joe Lydon has been absolutely flattened. Let's watch it again. It came from this play of the ball. There's Gibbs. And I think he's been sent from the field for using the elbow. Ronnie Gibbs, I didn't see whether he got minutes in the sin bin or whether he's been sent from the field. I think he's been sent from the field in his very last appearance for Manly Warringah. And if that is the case, what a cruel blow to a man that has served them so well over the last year or so. Yeah, well, I didn't, uh, I didn't think I saw an elbow in, in that instant at all. You know, he was committed to the tackle and, uh, you know, he just went in. Well, we'll get a confirmation of that in a moment. I was watching Joe Lydon at the time. When the, did you see whether he actually gave you minutes in the bin? or? No, I didn't, no. So another chance for Stevenson to add more points for Wigan. What a sensational start. Here it comes again. Lydon with the attempted at drop goal. Well... Nothing is conclusive there. It was slightly late. I couldn't see whether he, in fact, used the elbow. But Stevenson with a chance from around about 44, 45 metres out, directly in front of the post. So far, three from four. What a sensational start to the second half. Stevenson steadies himself. This is a vital kick. He's got the distance. And he's kicked it. So Wigan go further ahead. They lead by eight points to two. And the crowd here at Central Park are in raptures. Well, Henderson Gill feels the quick restart by Manly Baringa. Well, they've got the job ahead of them now, Graham Eady. They have, Dave. They're going to have to uh, strike back very quickly, otherwise uh, Wigan will just hang on to this. Nicky Kiss runs from dummy half. Sean Wayne, Andy Gregory turning the defence around again. Shearer feels it on the 22. Runs to Gregory and takes the tackle, a three-man tackle by Wigan. And they finally put him to ground. Well, I think for the reaction of Ronnie Gibbs, I think uh, the news is, as I mentioned, I think he's been sent from the field. Yeah, the referee was very adamant that he, uh, that he left the field before play started again. Gately. So Manley playing a man short. Darrell Williams is also down in back play injured. There's Hasler running from dummy half, trying to open them up close to the ruck, but Hanley and also Brian Case affect the two-man tackle. Ronson comes into dummy half. That's Vorton, stepping run from the Manly captain. 
Woodway came in with the tackle over the top. Gately. Phil Daly. Oh, gee, there's some solid defence going in there. They've got their tails up now, Wigan, and Manley's going to be uh, hard, to, hard to get back into this game. Penalty to Manley Baringa. Cliff Lyons is calling for attention for the injured player. He's trying to pick up who it might be. Looks like Phil Daly, I think. Phil Daly, the injured player. So Terry Randall coming out with the magic water for the injured manly player, Phil Daly. Just a victim of some pretty solid defence. We'll see Vorton play the ball here now. And just watch what happens to, uh, to Phil Daly. No holes barred in defence. And he really felt the brunt of that one. Eight minutes gone in this sensational second half of football. Henderson Gill, the real crowd pleaser at Central Park. Well, I suppose uh, this side in front of this capacity crowd really realise the importance of what's ahead of them in the final 31 minutes of this game. They do. This crowd will, you know, with, with 10 minutes to go, if they're still in front by the, this amount of points, this crowd will get right behind them and uh, it's going to be uh, a very big effort for Manly to pull it out. So Michael O'Connor with the ball placed. 34 metres out. Listen to the whistling and the cheering of the Wigan crowd. O'Connor won from two so far. His second attempt was a shocker. Let's see what he can do. He's missed it. They will come back to the quarter line. The score remains eight points to two in favour of Wigan. So Lydon with the restart from the quarter line. Breezy ball for Ronson. He leads it for his fullback Shearer. Taken by Gregory and Hanley. Finally, Henderson Gill wrestles into the ground. He's just inside this touchline on the commentary side of Central Park. That's Ronson. Taken by Case and also by Nicky Kiss. And they drive him back in defence. Manly with their backs to the wall. Wigan with the six point break. They lead by 4 2 at half time. Hasler, Lyons. And more importantly, Graham, the fact that Manly are playing with just 12 men. Well, uh, it's happened before where um, you know, a player has been sent off and inspires the, the other 12 players. Uh, hopefully Manly, Manly will be inspired by Ronnie Giggs being sent off and uh, kick on from here. Andy Gregory, that's Sean Wayne. Long pass out. Stevenson comes to the centre of the ground. Taken in the tackle. Case. Sean Wayne. Again, some solid tackling. Well, Maxi Krilich, uh, the loss of Ron Gibbs, that's going to be a crucial blow and a cruel blow to Manly Baringa. Certainly will, David. Uh, the Wigan side have really got their tails up at the moment, and uh, we're, going to, we're going to have to really close up into the, uh, the defence and stop these Wigan guys uh, keeping the ball alive. There's certainly some very good players out there in this Wigan side, and this fellow's one of them. Edwards hoists it high. Pressure on the Manly defence. Picked up by Hasler, and that's relieved the pressure. Centre of the field on the 22, Manly in possession of the ball. Dale Shearer. Cochran. Williams. He missed both matches with the New Zealand side when they played against Wigan and against Great Britain at Central Park. He was looking forward to this clash in front of this big crowd today, I can tell you. Although he wouldn't be too impressed with that scoreline at the moment. Lions. Driving play downfield, Hampson comes back. They rate him with the safest pair of hands in Britain. Oh, great tackle by O'Connor. Henderson Gill, Gregory Gill. Cunningham 
affected the tackle. Edwards, switch of play. That's Richard Russell. Product of the Wigan St. Patrick local junior club here. Ellery Hanley. There's the strength of Hanley. Oh, good play. Beautiful pass for Stevenson. He's got back inside. Russell in support. Inside the 22, but Cliff Lyons is there. But this crowd is to its feet. Wigan on the attack. Six more and final tackle it is, in fact. Gregory, long pass. Oh, and Hampson's hands let him down for the first time in the match. And we'll see the scrum go down. I won't be critical of Hampson. It wasn't an easy pass to pull down. But had he taken it, it could have been shut the gate, Graham Eady. It could have been. David, they're, uh, they're spreading manly now with that one man short. They're finding gaps out wide and they're, they're throwing the ball around. And um, I really thought that uh, that was a, should have been a penalty to Manly, that. I thought um, Henderson Gill was offside then. But, uh... Well, Max, it's not surprising that a side that plays football like this attracts a great crowd like this on a cold Wednesday night in Britain. Yes, I'd certainly want to get out here and watch this football side. They're exciting. They're willing to throw the ball around and their defence is excellent. So they are a top side. And a lot of this credit is to Graham Lowe, the man that uh, New Zealand didn't want anymore. I'll tell you, Wigan are pretty glad they've got him. So Manly Baringa trailed by eight points to two. 14 minutes of play gone in the second half. They're playing a man short. Ron Gibbs has been sent from the field, and there's that aggressive defence that Max Krilich was talking about, and we're going to come up with the ball. So now Manley's 12 men will be tested. Pace. Gregory. Stepping run by the little halfback, and Manley are in desperate straits. Henderson Gill, pushed out of the way by Nicky Kiss. Edwards, one of the real playmakers. Sean Wayne. Henderson Gill. Nearly through that line of defence. Edwards, Leiden, cut out pass, Hampson, this time picked it up beautifully, flick pass. Stevenson, Manley a shot to ribbons out wide. Henderson Gill, straight up field. But the Manley defence holds firm. But they're under pressure. Eight metres out from the line, Ellery Hanley. This is where he's dangerous. Stevenson. Now they can, they've got the attack going again through Gregory. Manley are under pressure on the final tackle. What will the tactics be? Will Edwards put it high? He unloads it. Lydon held the pass up. Gately comes up with it for Manley. But Max, how long can Manley keep this up in defence with just 12 men? Well, put it this way, they're going to have to keep it up all the way. They, they uh, hung out well there. The uh, Wigan side kept the ball flowing, but their defence was good enough for the task. Now they're going to have to counter-attack and get this ball flowing around like the Wigan side are. Solid tackle by Potter, but he's earned the eye of the referee, John Holdsworth. And a time for Manley to regroup and settle themselves down because I can tell you for 16 minutes of the second half they have been under intense pressure. Young Paul Shaw's coming on at the moment and Phil Daly going off. It appears as though he may have popped a shoulder. So a reshuffle in the Manly pack. I say that may force Paul Wharton to uh, move up into the front row, Graham. Yes, uh, I know Paul doesn't like playing up there, but... Uh where he's running now, it looks like that's where he's playing. We also have Jeremy Tyshurst out on the right wing. He's replaced David Ronson. Here's Gately. Oh, great defence again by Wigan. Paul Shaw, just a little player that can inspire some play for Manly. Here's O'Connor. Great step by O'Connor. Through the dummy. Intercept. Kept alive. Picked up by Gately. That's Shaw. Ducked under the tackle and finally goes to ground. Cochran, Cliff Lyons. Now Shaw. Swarming defence by Wigan. Ball's gone astray and they come up with it. 
Wigan in possession through Andy Gregory. That's Henderson Gill, pulled out of the tackle of Gately. Gately comes at him again, impedes the progress, but Gill stepping and weaving. Nicky Kessler, dummy half, goes on his own, and there's a gap. Michael O'Connor stopped the progress with Ty Hurst. Andy Gregory, Edwards, quick hands, good way. Ellery Hanley kept the pass alive. That's good way. Look for the support on the outside of Stevenson. That's him at dummy half. Beautiful play for Hanley. And Vorton and Hasler's defence is there. Final tackle. Edwards to Scurry from dummy half as well. Now he unloads it for Gregory. Attempted drop goal. But it's wide of the mark. 8-2 the scoreline. It still remains here at Central Park. Well, four quid entry. Uh, Maxi. I think the fans have got their money's worth. They certainly have, David. The, uh, if this was on all the time, this is like in the state football, the old state of origin. No quarter asked or given, and the boys are really getting stuck into it. The defence of this side, you, you spoke about it earlier, it's the Tempers flare. It's right on. Wayne comes in, and it's an all-inner here at Central Park. Ringside action of 37,000 people. I knew Manly came here knowing they had, were going to have a battle, Graham, but I really don't think they thought they were going to get it as intense as this. No, I think uh, I think they might have thought, you know, it'll be a good open game of football, but, um, you know, the, uh, I think watching the replay, I think the referee might have erred here by, you know, letting him go on with a tackle for so long. Well, the penalty, in fact, has gone to Manly Baringa, but it was really mayhem in there. The referee was, is in uh, there trying to settle it. And the player going into the sin bin for 10 minutes is Brian Case. Shearer, who was involved in that little fracas, was the man that drove the ball into touch. And there's a sense of urgency I can detect in this manly side. Max, you're down there. I notice the intensity of Tice first trying to get the ball into play. Broken Shire takes play up. Another substitution in this manly side. Knees dropped in by Nicky Kiss. Now, this is something that Wigan don't have to do at the moment, Graham. It's a silly play. It is silly, you know. They had Manly down, down in their uh, quarter, and all they had to do was keep them, keep them there, and uh, the pressure was on all the time. Now they're giving away silly penalties and uh, letting Manly, well, back up into their quarter now. Well, in fact, they are inside the 22. That's where we'll see the tap restart. Broken Shire charging upfield. Hasler. Centre of the field. Shaw. Fatty Vorton unloaded the pass for Cliff Lyons. Vorton again handling for the second time in the movement. Dale Shearer up from that fullback possession trying to spark something into this manly attack. They've got to do something pretty soon, I can tell you. We're past the halfway mark of the second half. Vorton met with that strong defence. And again, we can come up with possession of the ball. Widens the man that gets to his feet. Hanley. And the other thing is, uh, Graham, Bobby Fulton has already been forced to make replacements. Graham Lowe hasn't had to do that yet, and he's got three or four standing by. Yes, it, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, they've got many to come at, uh, with you know, 15 minutes to go. No one fresh to come on and, and spark something. And the fact they're playing with 12 men. The job right ahead of the Sydney Premiers. Edwards knocks the ball on. Toes it through. The referee has allowed play to go on. Henderson Gill. Well, how long do you play advantage? <laughs> there was no advantage there whatsoever to Manly Baringa. And play will finally come back for the scrum. No, I think as soon as Sean Edwards kicked that ball, it should have been pulled up. But you learn to live with that over here, David. <laughs> so the scrum to go down, centre of the field, just short of the halfway line at Manly's end of the ground. 18 minutes of play remaining, Manly trail by six points. 4-2 at half time it was. And surprisingly, with all the action we've seen, we've seen no tries. Lions 
Michael O'Connor, Dale Shearer, over halfway, but that desperate defence, they nearly took him into the grandstand. And Andy Goodway, inspiring his players at the moment to keep the effort up. They can sense victory. And so can this 37,000 crowd at Central Park. They've been so used to reclaiming victory in the last 18 months or so. It's not hard to understand, Graham, why they've got the tag, the entertainers. No, it's, uh, they do, they throw the ball around. You know, this is on nearly every week for them. Manley caught inside, caught offside, and the penalty on halfway will go to Wigan. Well, it's taken him a while, really, to pick that up, uh, 23 minutes into the second half, and uh, really they've uh, just been on both sides. Well, here's a chance for Wigan to launch another attack on this depleted Manly Warringah side. The tap restart from Nicky Kiss. Well, he made a valuable five or six to take play inside the 22. Andy Gregory, Potter. Well, that's good defence by Manley. A driving tackle that time by Brokenshire. Wayne, Gregory, a long pass for Goodway. Lyons was up quickly. Hampson. Gregory will come the open side again through Leiden. There's the gap opening but closing very quickly. Here's Hanley. Stood in the tackle and goes to ground on the 22. Here's Edwards. Held the pass up beautifully for Wayne. Well, mainly appear to have regrouped their defence. They appear a lot more composed at the moment but they're under intense pressure. Gregory with a beautiful little kick through but good positional play by Dale Shearer. There's a player, Graham, that has emerged in world class in the last couple of years and really benefited from that kangaroo tour, Dale Shearer. Well, Dale Shearer, I saw him score a trial when I was in Australia and uh, against Cronulla, I think it was, and he just cut them to pieces. Well, I'm sure that the Manly fans watching this back at the Leagues Club at Brookvale will be hoping that Dale Shearer can inject something into this manly side. They trail by eight points to two and time is ticking away. In fact, we're into the final 15 minutes. But the way the clock behaved in the first half, we just don't really know how long it's to go. There's Cochran scurrying for dummy half. Now manly, move it out wide. And in fact, I mentioned that uh, Ronson was the player that went off the field. I think Williams is the man that went. And Ronson has moved into the centres. So Darrell Williams, who was struggling in that first half, was the man replaced by Jeremy Tyshurst. Play midway, the half the 22 in Manley's end of the ground. And it really has been all Wigan in the second half as far as territory is concerned. Edwards on the short side. Beautiful pass for Goodway. Picked up by Edwards. In turn for Gregory. That's Stevenson, a dummy half. Edwards. Wayne. Hampson, again showing great hands. Here's the final tackle. Stevenson hoists it high. Here's some pressure. Paul Shaw was the man that came up to answer the call for Manly Baringa. Well, Max, right through the Premiership, I doubt very much if Manly have been subjected to the pressure like this for, say, 70 minutes of a, of a match. I would say that's exactly right, David. The, uh, this is extreme pressure by the Wigan side. They're fundamentally very, very good players, and they've got some very talented players as well, and they are putting Manly under good pressure. Manly sort of got to get down the other end of the paddock. They're under too much pressure under, in their own 25 for too long. And here's Lyons trying to work it out. Long pass, Vorton. Nearly passed it blind to O'Connor. Here's a beautiful step from O'Connor. Support on the inside, but a poor pass. And Potter's the man that comes up. Well, they're the sort of errors that bring pressure back on your own side. Uh, David, especially uh, going into, not even out of your own half. And uh... 
But there are signs that Manly uh, have still got something left that they can do something. Wayne, Edwards, that's Gregory. Hanley through the gap. Desperate defence by Shaw again. Here's Stevenson. Inside the 22. Full marks to Manly. They've weathered this storm. It's been a barrage from Whit Wigan. Now Gregory. Back inside for Goodway. Ellery Hanley. Stevenson. Little Paul Shaw has done a mountain of work in defence. One of the real stars of the future, I can assure you. There's Hasler. He's done a mountain of work as well. Cliff Lyons. Kept the ball alive with Broken Char. Now Shaw. Probably took the wrong option by coming back in field. Stepped under Gregory. Got the pass away. Shearer goes beyond the 22. Oh, pass. Shearer. Basketball fashion for Lyons. O'Connor. But this, man, this Wigan defence held firm. They know they have 12 minutes to protect this 8-2 lead. Time ticking away for the Sea Eagles. Just 10 days after their triumph at the Sydney Cricket Ground. But here's Dale Shearer. The kick ahead. Desi Hasler. But back comes Goodway. Well, I wonder whether Shearer knew he had the support yeah, of uh, Des Hasler. He didn't seem to look at all, did he? He just uh, he went, he put the kick in. Well, he made the break. Hasler was backing up on the inside. He was calling for it, but 37,000 fans yeah. denied Shearer from hearing it. No, he never looked. And good covering from Andy Goodway. Gee, what an inspired performance by the uh, Wigan second row of the former oh, Manly yeah, player. She's had a big game tonight. He was voted the man of the match in the recent War of the Roses between Yorkshire and Lancashire, and he's repeated that form here tonight and led from up front in this Wigan side. So ties us to his feet in Cochrane, and that's Hasler to Vorton. Vorton tried to keep the ball alive. Desperate play by the Manly captain. Cochrane. Ran wide. And I just detect a few little holes opening wide in this Wigan side. Can the Manly side exploit it? Cliff Lyons. Brokenshire. Shaw did well. Hasler also. But good solid defence. Final tackle. What will the Manly tactics be? Cochrane with a kick ahead. And the ball goes dead in goal. Play will come back to the quarter line. Well, Max, you must be proud the way that Manly have stuck to it with 12 men. They've come back against all the odds. They certainly have, um, David. They're in there right to the final whistle. This side won't give up. And unfortunately, there, I thought uh, Dale Shearer could have given the ball to Desi Hasler, and it would have been a try into the pass, but he took the option, and that's the way rugby league goes. But there's still a few minutes, 10 minutes to go, and it's anyone's game still. Henderson Gill plays the ball in centre field. Brian Case. He's back on the field after his little stint in the sin bin for that attack to the face of Dale Shearer. Nicky Kiss burrows his way towards halfway and we're into the final 10 minutes. In fact, nine minutes remaining in this match. The match to decide the club champion of the world, Ellery Hanley, leading this Wigan side in the absence tonight of Graham West, who was left out. And he's a pretty handy man to have sitting on the sideline as well, the former New Zealand captain. Yes, he is. He, uh, we played against him over in the Isle of Man in the um, charity shield, and he led the side very well. So the scrum packing down, 12 metres inside Manley's end of the ground. It's the Seagulls feed through shore. Cliff Lyons. That's the desperate stuff for Manley, the kick and chase. Look at Michael O'Connor. Can he win the race to the ball? Well, what about the knock-on? Well, I just sort of called a knock-on, and he usually does call those knock-ons, but uh, I don't know what... Uh, well, there's a penalty against Manley now. It takes a bit of pressure off. It does. Well, I would have thought that was propelled towards the opponent's goal line, Max Krilich. I think in Sydney that may have been ruled a knock-on. Certainly was a knock-on, David, but uh, obviously the English referee is going to relieve a bit of pressure here for the Wigan side. I suppose he's got to get out of Central Park tonight too, hasn't he? 
Yes, he certainly has. He lives in the air, I suppose. So that's the way that the football goes over here. Well, he's rated as the number one in Great Britain at the moment. He did the Wembley Cup final last year. He refereed Australia and Wigan here last year. Andy Gregory, the man of dummy half. Eight minutes remaining in this match. Brian Case, it's been around for many a day at Central Park, but he's had an inspired game tonight as well. So too is this man, Andy Goodway. I don't think he performed like this with Manly too often, Max. I, I'd say that's right too. <laughs> He's certainly having an excellent game though, he's using his power, he's offloading the ball, he's tackling very, very strongly in defence, he's, he's having an excellent game here tonight. So the kick out on the full, play to come back to inside Wigan's end of the ground. They'll be quite content to use the clock, Graham, seven minutes to go, although they can't relax. No, they can't relax. You know, Manly showed that uh, you know, they, they've got plenty of players in there that can pull something out. Scrum win Manly, Lions, switching the play. Shearer tried to stand Gregory up, but the little halfback comes and wrestles him to the ground. Ronson. Eight points to two. The Riversiders from Wigan in the lead. They led by four to two at half time. No tries in the match so far. Will this be one for Manley? O'Connor. No, it won't be. Henderson Gill wraps it up. Joe Lydon struggling on an injured left knee again. The injury that plagued him so often with Eastern Suburbs and Sydney. Well, Manly has shown the willingness to try and exploit them out wide, despite only playing with 12 men. Well, penalty goes against Wigan for the incorrect play the ball from Nicky Kiss. So a chance now for Manly really to apply some pressure. Well, we've got to do, got to do something soon, David. The time's running out uh, very quickly. We're into the final five. And I've mentioned it before, but it's just totally amazing with two sides with great attacking flair like this. We haven't seen a try to, as yet. But haven't we seen some magic football? Let's see what Manley can come up with. Referee Halsworth says, this is where the tap must be. It's a set move from Manley. Cochran switching the play. Vorton did well to take it. But he's been driven over the touchline. Well, they've taken him, in fact, over the fence. I'll tell you what. Broken Shire's in there to try and... I don't think Paul Morton's pulled up too flash from that either. He yes, hasn't. I think that was a bit of a, you know, a nasty incident then that uh, Nicky Kiss, the number nine for, uh, for Wigan, uh, pushed him over, pushed him right into that. Well, Andy Goodway was the man that came across to see if his old manly teammate was OK. And I suppose you can afford to do that if you're leading by eight points to two with about four minutes to go. We'll take nothing away from Andy Goodway at Central Park tonight. He's been an outstanding player. Chance again for Manly Warringah. Shaw says we're going to put it into touch, sir. And a chance to settle down and regroup for the tap restart. Red Roost, of course, one of our great sponsors, putting up $1,000 for the man of the match tonight. Broken Shire will be announcing that at full time. Might get the thinking cap on Graham as we think about a man that uh, would be a worthy recipient of that award. Here's Dale Shearer. Official attendance, 36,895. Tepper's frying again. Referee Holdsworth is going to pack a scrum down. Well, I wasn't a bad judge. I said uh, 37,000. That's not bad for non-local, Graham. <laughs> yeah, we're near a fair bit, but sort of. <laughs> so, this replacement. Well, that makes it pretty handy coming on uh, with no number. That's Brian Case, the man going off. And the player coming on is only a, a youngster, 17 years of age. His name is Ian Lucas. And there's Dale Shearer. Lucas, only 17 years of age. He's a fine lump of a lad too. A big moment for him here. 
Cunningham hit very heavily by Lucas. Hasler, Lyons, and that could be the ball game. Could be, yep. Yeah. Final three minutes. Wigan lead by eight to two. And listen to this crowd. This is what you predicted, Graham, if they're in the lead with a few minutes to go. Well, I know our fans back in Sydney uh, would be praying for a Manly Warringah victory, but what a great thing this will be for rugby league in general. But it's not all over. The Sydney Premiers, can they come up with two minutes to go? Cochrane. It's been a guts effort by Manly Moringa. Vaughton wrapped up. Two minutes remaining. Manly full of spirit, full of running. Shaw. Hasler. Shearer. Dale Shearer. Ooh. But the cover defence is there. He could have got that away to Mike O'Connor. It was a try then. Now Manly move again. Cliff Lyons. Hasler. Cochran. Mel Cochran. Here's a go. Cunningham. But again, that desperate Wigan defence. Hold strong. Long pass. Lyons. The numbers out wide. Here's a go. But again, that Wigan defence. That was a great tackle by Steve Hansen then. Watch the Lions with the grubber kick. Nothing is going right for Manly no. Warringah. No, I think, uh, I think that's it now, David. I think uh, they just run this ball out for, for the five tackles. and Last minute of play. 39,895 fans will erupt here at Central Park if the scoreline stays as it is in about 35 seconds from now. The 40 minutes are up by my watch. We've had a couple of stoppages. But Stevenson will use the clock as the chant of here we go, here we go. Strikes up at Central Park. What a marvellous 12 months they've had. Henderson Gill. They will want to use the six tackles, Max Krillich, this Wigan team. Sorry, sorry, David, I can't hear you down here. The noise is deafening. It is deafening. Play to the halfway line, or about five metres short of it. Andy Goodway. Nicky Kiss. Slowly to his feet on the halfway line. The Riversiders sense victory in this inaugural World Club Championship match. Well, a long way to come. 12,000 miles for the family side. 41 minutes. 41 minutes. Six more to go, says the referee. That's it. It's all over. Wigan are the world club champions with a thoroughly deserved victory by eight points to two. It was 4-2 at half time. No tries, surprisingly, Graham, in a match chock full of action. It was, David. It was a, it was a very good... Uh... Graham Lowe. He's very happy, and why wouldn't he be? You know, he's, uh, his side has just beaten Manly, and, uh, and they've, uh, they've really, really done it uh, quite professionally. Um, they tackled Manly, really tackled Manly out of it. They hail the hero, Central Park. Graham Lowe, I think I may have detected a tear. This is a very important victory for him. The only cup he was denied last year was the Challenge Cup. The Lancashire Cup, the John Player Trophy, the League Championship, and the Premiership Trophy suggested they were going to be formidable opponents for the Sydney Winfield Cup champions and they proved that tonight here at Central Park. The scorers for Wigan. Four goals to Stevenson from five attempts. For their eight points, Michael O'Connor, the sole points with one goal 
from three attempts. And they're coming down the tunnel back to their rooms. A tremendous performance. That's young Martin Dermott, the reserve hooker. Dean Bell, who missed the match. Michael O'Connor has scored a wig and jumper. And they really, Brian Case, he wouldn't have seen a better victory by Wigan, I'm sure. The smiles of the victors. Phil Daly, Mark Brokenshire will take a break from Central Park. We'll be back to announce the man of the match and share the dressing room festivities in just a moment. Central Park and great joy in this Wigan dressing room. They have claimed themselves as the world champions after a marvellous 86-87 and a great moment for the Wigan team and their coach Graham Lowe. Our sponsor Red Rooster has put up an award of $1,000 to the man of the match and it goes to Andy Goodway. Andy, fabulous performance by the Wigan side. I think you had a personal point to prove out there tonight. Uh, not, not personally, you know, it's all amounts it to being a team game and it was a good team performance. Uh, it's an excellent professional club, we just, we just wanted to put a professional game on for the spectators. A lot of people wonder just how seriously both these sides would, would take this match. I think it was quite evident in the opening minutes. Oh, well, we, we were deadly serious, so no way we wanted to lose to any Australian side. Uh, we take enough flack as it is, we were out to prove that, uh, that Wigan are the best side in the world. You won a lot of trophies last year, have you come up against a tougher opponent than Manly? Uh, yeah, there are some English clubs that's as tough as Manly, yeah, why not? Why, why, you know, why, why do down the British clubs all the time? You know. What will happen with the $1,000? Uh, it will go into my little daughter's uh, little piggy bank. Okay. I'd, like, I'd like to thank Red Rooster as well for the... Congratulations for the on a top performance by you and the Wigan side. Yeah, thanks a thank you. See you, boys. Well, Graham, uh, did I detect a tear uh, at the end of the match there when 37,000 people claimed victory for Wigan? Well, just, just a little tiny one, but it was a tear of joy, and I'm sure that it wasn't the only one in the crowd. Tremendous commitment of both sides out there tonight. There was a lot of stake. There was, um, you know, for, for two sides with such uh, tremendous t attacking ability, it was also a credit to both sides' defence because there was nothing in it all the way through the game. Do you think the loss of Ron Gibbs robbed uh, the match of anything? Well, um, I hope so, but, but um, you know, that's the way it goes. Uh, 
if anything, it would probably inspire their players even more. Uh, it's just one of those things that happen. And, um, well, I don't know. I'm only really looking at our players, Dave. Graham, another trophy for this uh, illustrious Wigan club. But I know that the Challenge Cup is one you're after uh, next May. Yeah, well, um, I was privileged to sit uh, with you during the Channel 10 uh, coverage of the match last year, and I thoroughly enjoyed that. But this time, I'd like to be right waving to you from the other side of the field. OK, put up the performance like that tonight. I'm sure you will be at Webley next April, mate. Well, certainly hope so. Okay, well done tonight. Thanks, mate. Ella, I know you're disappointed missing the opening tour match against Australia last year here at Central Park. Did that make up for it tonight? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it was absolutely a tremendous game. I mean, you've got to give credit to Manly. They came across here. Um, they're a good renowned side themselves. But I think we're going to prove tonight that they can take on anybody. It was, I don't think it was just a fluke. I think the opening 20 minutes was absolutely a fierce competition. It was a good combat between two good professional sides. A very clean and tough, hard game. Do you think it's the forerunner of this going on as uh, an ongoing thing? It's a great thing what happened here tonight at Central Park. Yeah, definitely. I think um, it'd be nice for another Australian side to come across or an English side to go across to Australia and prove the worth again because rugby league's got so much to offer in um, every part of the world. I mean, it's tremendous. We've seen some marvellous Great Britain sides over the years. You've fallen away a bit in recent times. Is this a great uh, impetus for the tour next year? Well, it's always nice to build on but I mean you've got to take match by match to be quite honest I mean you, you can never it's not a foregone conclusion you've got to just take step by step and build on each each step well done tonight all right thanks a lot Henderson what does this mean to football in Great Britain well it means everything to me it means the world uh, I'm just over the moon very deeply touched uh, I was very impressed as well both standards the standards of the game was very high as uh, everybody will see um, like I said Manly came over uh, to give us an hard game we've got every bit of respect for Manly they've got internationals in their side uh, but they've also got to respect the Wigan and like people will look up now and take notice of English Rugby League you've also got high regard for the coach Graham Lowe yeah well uh, like I said I played under a few coaches and uh, he's by far the best <laughs> by far the best coach that I've ever played under uh, he's He's never short of ideas, and like uh, I've never seen any coach that has got that many variations of one set move. Uh, he's great. I think he's found a way to get the best out of me and the best out of Wigan. And like I said, he'll if he had the chance to restore greatness to Great Britain, he could do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Bobby, it's a long way to come to Sabre defeat, but um, you must have been proud of the way the boys stuck at it. Oh, when you consider that we played, you know, probably the, the, one of the, the best attacking rugby league sides in the world for 50 minutes with 12 men, I'll tell you what, we did pretty well. Nice, proud of the place, I'll, I'll give you the tip. But, um, you know, we, we busted them all over the paddock, we busted them in close on the fringe and out wide, but we just couldn't get the ball over the line. I mean, we were the only team to get the ball over the line was Dale, Dale's try, and, um, or non try, should I say. And um, from all reports and talking to the players after the game, it was a dead set try. So, you know, it, it probably could have, we could have got away with the game if we would have had the 12 men for the full period. But I mean, that's not to be, and it's uh, bygone to be bygone, so to speak. And, uh, you know, we've come up with a loss. Mike, after having uh, weathered the storm in the second half against them last year in the opening match of the Kangaroo Tour, I think you knew what you were going to expect out there tonight. Yeah, we expected a hard game, Dave, and we got one. Um, you know, full credit to Wigan, they come up with a win. But, you know, it's a different game over here, it really is. Um, a lot of the calls weren't heard out there in the crowd tonight, is that a problem? Yeah, it was a bit of a problem. The crowd was very vocal, particularly when uh, Wigan were over in our half and they were on the attack. But I think it worked both ways, you know. Um, you know, we've played in front of parochial crowds before. I can't, don't think we could blame that for the loss. Uh, we played some good football on the night, and unfortunately they played a bit better. Did you expect that defence to be as tough as it was out there tonight from Wigan? Well, we'd seen them on video, and uh, they haven't been beaten in 27 matches, so we expected uh, a very hard game. We certainly got it. You know, I have to say that uh, getting Ronnie Gibson off didn't help us, but... Uh, there were no excuses, uh, we just did our best. Is it a bit of a pill to swallow after the triumph just 10 days ago? No, oh, not really. I mean, we, we still consider ourselves the, the best team in Australia. And unfortunately, on the night, it was billed as a World Club Championship. Um, I mean, you know, if they want to accept that, well, it's good, good as gold, but we still know we're, how good a side we are. And uh, the thing about the, the game was that we were very proud of ourselves, and I was proud of the players, that we just still managed to keep them scoreless, even though we only had 12 men. And so yet another triumph for the Wigan side, adding another trophy to their already full trophy cabinet. Full-time comments from Graham Eady. Graham, uh, they did it pretty well. They did, David. They stuck to their guns right throughout the game and uh, came out on top. 
Unfortunately, uh, Manly had uh, Ron Gibson off, which, uh, you know, we had a look at the monitor and it didn't look that bad to us. Uh, I don't even think it warranted five minutes in the sin bin, but, you know, it, uh, he was sent off and really um, didn't do much uh, much good for, for Manly's hopes that way. But, uh, you know, uh, we can't take anything away from Manly. Manly only arrived here two days ago and, um, you know, after, you know, celebrating for... You know, probably a week over there after winning the grand final, they came out and they uh, they really uh, went went all the way as well as, as Wigan did. Well, thanks for joining us on the commentary team. All the best for the rest of the year with Halifax. Thanks, David. A great medium. And we also had Max Crillius joining us on the sideline. We thank Max. And uh, just repeating the full-time score from Central Park, eight points to two in favour of Wigan. But